thank you for being here tonight. We're so excited. You are muted, so we'll have to get you unmuted before you start. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. There yeah. we go. The, the Yay. dreaded mute button now. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Can I get a whoop, whoop? There you go. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. This probably looks like a virtual background, but it isn't. We are actually in my kitchen, and that is the setting for this gumbo presentation. Now, before I get started, my brand motto is let's get fit. And as a military woman, as a military veteran, we like making acronyms out of everything. So, but I believe that fit, it's the root word of fitness where yes, we need to be fit physically, but we also need to be fit emotionally, mentally, in all areas of our life. So focused, intentional, and thriving. So I would like for you, um, to give a reaction or just give a high five to the, it's like Brady Bunch where we got the squares, give a high five to the squares on the right, left and the right and say, let's get fit. Woo! That's right. I love it. Oh, how adorable. <laughs> now you're probably thinking, okay, Jennifer, last name Foxworthy. You're familiar with the redneck comedian, Jeff Foxworthy, right? And many people ask me, are you related to Jeff Foxworthy? And the answer is, I wish. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Foxworthy is the, uh, my married name and people are like, can you tell me a redneck joke? And I'm like, do they not see I am black? I don't know any redneck jokes. I'm not gonna take his stage but actually, I will tell you, I do have one redneck joke. You know you're a redneck if your dog and your wallet are hooked to the same chain. That's all I have. I'm going to stick to my day job. Hopefully you found that funny. You can LOL in the uh, chat, what have you. <laughs> so, yes, that is my only one. And interestingly enough, he actually has a sister named Jennifer. So I have contemplated of showing up at Jeff Foxworthy's family reunion, like putting his real sister Jennifer in a closet and then say, hey, bro, what's up? No time, no see. You think that might work? <laughs> so as you can see, I love to laugh. I love to joke. I love to smile. That is my innate uh, nature. And I just truly believe in these environments, especially what's going on today, we really do need to um, not always take ourselves seriously. So I'm going to step into scene here. I'll turn on my camera because I want to take this from a different angle. And we're going to get ready. So hopefully you all can see me. We've worked on the lighting. The name of this presentation is Gumbo. And again, like to make acronyms out of everything. Greatness, unbounded, moving beyond ordinary. Why that? Because sometimes, ladies, we forget about the greatness that we have inside of us. And unbounded is such a strong word. It's unstoppable. It's limitless that no one can put you inside a box. Only yourself if you allow it. And then we're moving beyond ordinary because we are not ordinary. We are extraordinary. We are extraordinary beings. So I'm going to put my apron on. Looks like we're going to get cooking. My Paula Dean apron. Woohoo! Diva, that's right. <laughs> and please, uh, interaction. So I'm gonna take my lid off. I got my special, special utensils here. Oh, we are in it, we are in it. All right, this is your pot of life. This 
pot, this is a visual representation of how to overcome adversity. It is my goal to help you understand your morals, your beliefs, your values. Maybe identify also any negative attitudes that you may have and move beyond that. And overall, realize the support systems and the inherent characteristics that you have to overcome adversity. So to represent our life, I have this pot. Now, ladies, who has had gumbo before? Okay, um, so that way not everybody is shouting out, but if you can put in the chat box, what are some of the ingredients in, that you found in gumbo? Okay. Jennifer, I see, I'll, um, I'll read them off to you. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, we've got shrimp, okra, sausage, shrimp. Tomatoes. Oh, it's moving so fast now. Okay, okra, shrimp, tomatoes. You got, it's everything, right? Your gumbo is whatever you want to put in it. And that is like us. That's why I named this presentation Gumbo. Because much like the Louisiana cuisine, there's everything that makes up who we are. So first, I truly believe we have potential. So that is the base of my gumbo. I believe that potential is the, is the starting seed of everything. Because if I don't realize, and I'm like Emerald, bam! If I don't realize that I have potential, I will never realize my greatness. So we have to, and that potential will have to be nurtured. And sometimes it's a matter of changing your environment. Maybe your upbringing wasn't as great, but the fact that you ladies are here and in this networking meeting, I know that you have the, discovered your potential and you're doing great things. So we're moving along in life, things are great. I'm gonna add in a dash of courage because it takes courage to start that business, to have a family, to be in that boardroom with the men handling your business because you earned that seat at the table. Then also, I'm gonna add in a dash of honor. You know I love you if I'm using my actual seasonings. We got some commitment, ladies. It takes a lot of commitment to do what we're doing to stay in the game, even when we might get discouraged. So I'm going to pow, a little determination right there. Or commitment. Oh, we can't get that determination. Bam. Ooh, this gumbo is, is going. It's good. It's it smells good. Then we have some perseverance. You got to sprinkle in the perseverance. We, we can never have enough of perseverance. We're going to sprinkle a lot of that. Then some self-care. Little, little pinch of some self-care that is going to come in handy. So we're cruising around and we're cruising along in life. We're having our family. We've started our business. We're going up the ladder of leadership. We have a great circle of friends around us. Things are going well. Down. Down? Did somebody say something? Okay, we're going to keep going. Now, here we have a lemon. By show of hands, how many of y'all love eating lemons? I'm gonna tell you my, my, okay, so we have some hands. More power to you. This is adversity. Oh, 
Mm. <laughs> it makes you pucker. It makes you draw back, shrug your shoulders. It gives you that face, that bitter face. They're like, oh my goodness, that's adversity. And that could be in a, for me, it could be domestic violence, being in an abusive relationship and not realizing it. Because now the person that professed their love for you is calling you out your names, the random slaps across the face, the gaslighting. This was truly me. I experienced service member on service member domestic violence. So I had all these great ingredients, my beliefs, my morals, my values, and now lemons get squeezed into my pot of life. Matter of fact, a whole bunch of lemons, five and a half years worth. And it was bitter, it was strange, it was uncomfortable. Because we don't speak on domestic violence enough, I had no idea what I was truly in. It happened so gradually. Now, when adversity happens, some people, what would you do? Would you throw your pot away? Would you just let it sit there and let that lemon, that adversity just fester? What would you do, ladies? If our lemon was the domestic violence or if our limit was whatever our lemon is? Amen. We're going to make lemonade or we're going to work that gumbo out. We're not going to throw our pot of life away because that's what the enemy wants. Throwing your pot of life away is like committing suicide, attempting suicide, or homicide, suicide, or just slipping into a depression. That's allowing the adversity to just marinate in your gumbo into your life and not doing anything about it. But because we know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we're not going to throw our pot out. We are going to reach for the things that we were already using, the values and morals and beliefs that we were already working with. For this situation dealing with domestic violence, I'm gonna have to reach for my courage because now I'm awakened and I know that this is not love and I don't deserve this. So I'm gonna sprinkle with a lot of courage because it's gonna take a lot of courage for me to recognize and leave. Also, I'm gonna reach for some honor because for me, I have to honor myself, my body, my mind, my soul. Life is worth living and this is not it. So I'm gonna put in some more honor. Commitment. I'm committed to myself. I'm committed that there is greater out there. And this may have been a bad relationship, but I'm not gonna give up on love. I'm gonna work on me. So as you see, ladies, I'm reaching for the characteristics, the values, the beliefs that I already was using beforehand. And definitely self-care because I'm gonna to have to go on a journey of healing to process what I just experienced. How in the world did I get there? And it's for me, 21.7 years in the Navy, I find myself in a five and a half year abusive relationship. Again, it had, and it was service member on service member. So for me, I was facing a war in three different fronts. I was facing a personal war with someone who professed that they loved me. Also, I was in an elite Navy group, your Naval Air Crew, so, which is a step below like your, your Navy SEALs. So I flew in airplanes to do the mission, 
with your pilot, your co-pilot, your navigator. And I was an in-flight technician. So in, when we were flying a mission, instead of having to land, if there was any malfunctions with the equipment, they would contact me. Well, just by the nature of my skin color and gender, I was the first in three different Navy squadrons. So you can imagine the isolation, discrimination, stereotypes. It was like workplace bullying, this, the career sabotage. In addition, I was flying combat missions in three different wars, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Iraq. So I really, I compartmentalize in order to get through each step. So sometimes your adversity is not just one thing. It could be your car broke down. It could be a loss of a loved one. It could be divorce. It could be a numerous things, a loss of a job. It could be what we're dealing with right now in our country with COVID-19 and, and just the looting and the rioting and just so much unrest in the political environment, regardless of what line you were on. We're dealing with some adversity now. But ladies, I want you to dig in deep. And this is to help you move past that adversity. And if all of these ingredients over here, they still don't get you out of that situation, then I have my secret sauce. Everybody got a secret sauce. That could be therapy, recognizing I need help. We have to end the stigma on mental health. So we put that therapy in there. Also, support groups. It's okay. Search for support groups that are dealing with whatever you are going through. Last but not least on the, um, my three secret sauces is faith. Faith will pull you through. Faith over fear. You were not meant to be stuck, stagnant, and stifled with your adversity. But that's not it. If you are still struggling, it's always great to have special people in your corner. Iron sharpens iron. I truly believe that if you are the only one in your group that's doing inspiring, then you need new friends. So I have this cute little Kool-Aid spoon. You need that person that's going to make you laugh, make you smile, tell you a joke. Okay, like I did in the beginning. You're going to need that special person to say, come on and just let's laugh or let's laugh through this. Because when you look back, you'll be like, wow, I'm so glad I was able to make it through and I couldn't have done it without your kind heart, your jokes, your laughter. So you, got, you always need your Kool-Aid friend, okay? Then you have your ladle friend. This is a person that's gonna come and pour into you. They're gonna remind you about your greatness and about your potential and that this too shall pass. They're gonna remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that you will find purpose from the pain that you will acknowledge what you've been through, that you will restore your broken soul, and that you will ultimately forgive. That was the journey of healing I found for myself. So it's, I went from victim to survivor to thriver, and that's what I hope for you ladies, is to be a thriver. So you need that little friend, somebody that's going to pour into you. Last but not least, you, you need that person who's gonna take you out of your pity party, who's gonna call you on your stuff. And they're gonna scoop at you and flip you over. 
That's your spatula friend, family member, friend, colleague, whatever it is, but you need a spatula person in your life. Someone like grilled cheese sandwich, come under you and scoop you up and flip you over because we can't stay at our pity party for long. Mm -mm. That's where the enemy wants you to stay because he wants to trick us that right is wrong and that wrong is right and that we are not worth it and that's not true. So now that I've explained everything that's in a gumbo pot and I know there's so many more, I would like to find out what are some characteristics, some morals, beliefs, and values that you draw on that you have in your gumbo pot? Child of God, absolutely. Yeah. Faith and hope. I love this, ladies. Yes. Determination. Spiritual life is so important. Family. Hopefully you were surrounded by a good family. Perseverance. Outstanding courage. You ladies are on it. So now let me ask. What negative attitudes or emotions, and this is a tough pill to swallow, reflecting on where you're at now or where you've been, what's in your pot of life that should not be in there? Is it okay, unforgiveness, fear, loneliness, shame, self-doubt? You ladies are so phenomenal. I wish this was in person because I'd be hugging and right there with you. Guilt, absolutely. What about pride? Many times we have our pride right in the mix of things. Yeah, our pride, fear, low self-esteem, that was all me. I experienced bullying early in my childhood, actually when I was in high school. And I just thought I was the ugliest thing walking the face of the earth. And that was the precursor for every poor relationship I found myself in because I was looking for love and acceptance. And that guy, that boy, he was looking for his sexual desires to be met. And I always found myself with the short end of the stick. So this is gumbo. We don't throw our pot away. This is us. We have everything that we need. We have all type of resources. And like I said, I mentioned therapy, faith, support groups. This is life. Nothing is promised except taxes and death. We're going to go through some things, but it's all about how you manage it, how you deal with it. And again, we can't forget our great people. And I'll share this before I close and open it up to Q&A. How are we doing on time? We're good. You're good. Keep going. Okay. So I wrote a blog. It's actually gumbo. I have a blog on, you can go to my website named after this presentation. And I wrote a blog called Your Rower, Your Sleeper, and Your Driller. You have to recognize in your circle who fits in those categories. The rower is the person that is rowing in the same direction that you want to go. They have that bullhorn and they're, they're like, you can do it. I got you. They're, they're paddling right with you. They're the ones that give you leads, help you find customers, share your posts, like your posts, encourage you. They're going to be one of these three, your rower. Then your sleeper is the person that's in your boat who is sleeping on your purpose and theirs. 
they don't know where they're going in life and see their snoring, which is like gossip, just noise, is a distraction to you. They are not helping you get to your goal. They are not encouraging you. They're not inspiring you. They're not empowering you. They're just a, making a bunch of noise with their snoring. They're sleeping on you and themselves. And then you have the dreadful driller. The driller is the person that's in your boat drilling holes in your boat. And all the while they're smiling, but see their teeth hide that serpent tongue. They're smiling at you, but they are drilling holes wanting your boat to sink and they will hop out before it does. Do you know of anybody like that? Be mindful of who's your rower, your sleeper, and your driller. Because when you identify your sleepers and your drillers, you unfollow, you block, you keep them at a distance, you use your boundaries, which is a part of self-care. Now we, you know, they say, hey, we all need some haters because imitation is the best form of flattery and everything else. You know that you're doing something right, and that's great. They can hate from the sidelines, but I'd be daggone if you want to let them in your inner circle to know all your passions and your secrets so they can steal your secret sauce and then use it for themselves. That's what you don't want. So you have been gumbleized. We have made our secret sauce. We have used our amazing characteristics. We have identified negative behaviors, emotions and attitudes that don't need to be in our pot of life. And once you identify that, that self-awareness, what are you going to put in place to ensure that you don't use them to deal with your adversity. My name is Jennifer Foxworthy, and it has been an absolute pleasure to be with IAW given this presentation. I salute you, lady. Now for questions. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, for those joining us, if you have questions or anything you wanna share, let us know in the chat. We can have people come off mute. I think it's probably best to say in the chat first or raise your hand if you have a question um, and, and we can feed these to Jennifer. Jennifer, there are some great comments here in the chat. Yes, um, thank you, thank you. Gracie, do you wanna come off mute and ask your question? Hi, Jennifer. Hi, honey. It was so much fun having you with us. You're a delight and a ball of energy, I love it. So my question to you was, what was your breaking point in life? Whether it was your domestic violence or the challenges that you were facing in your career, what was the breaking point for you in turning things around and not being a doormat anymore? Gracie, that's a great question. For me, it was, I got tired, of, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Meaning that I had to finally realize I'm trying to change everyone else because I was having codependent habits and traits. And that's what was also leading me into these poor relationships. And I didn't set boundaries from the beginning. And I was experiencing the same issues, but with different people. So it's like I was the common denominator. When you're doing math, what is a common denominator? You got different numbers, but you're getting the same results. That was my breaking point. As far as my abusive relationship, I think I was loyal to a fault. And I say that because it took me suspecting my ex-boyfriend of cheating before I got out of that relationship and moved forward. And that to me was like pouring salt on the wound. It's bad enough that you're gonna look me in my face and say, damn, you're ugly. Or look at you, your teeth, your hair, your this, your that. But then to go outside of the relationship, for me, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. 
Mm. And so that was my way of moving forward out of that relationship. But I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, Gracie. Thank you for sharing that and being so vulnerable. And you're far from being ugly, far from it. So it's all lies. Amen. Amen. But when you have low self-esteem, you believe it. The devil had me on the ropes. He was really just trying to take me out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kimberly Dunham, I see you have a question here. Do you want to come off mute and ask? Hey, Jennifer, good to see you again. Hey! That presentation, you were amazing. Thank you. I thank you for your authenticity, for your vulnerability, and for your courage. I am a domestic violence victor, but I find that it's so hard to reach back and help those that are going through it because there's such a stigma and there's silence and women are suffering and I wanna be able to help them not go through what I went through for as long as I went through it. So how do you help these women with things like what you're doing, talking and putting it out there and helping them to see that there's so much more than what someone is telling them that they are. I think, Kimberly, leading by example and sharing your truth. Once um, in 2014, I self-published my first book, Tomorrow My Sunshine Will Come, Memoirs of Women Who Survived Domestic Violence. And then also, I, when I found out the statistics that one in four women and one in seven men will be in a severe physical abusive relationship in their lifetime, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. So it took the guilt and shame because I'm like, I'm G.I. Jane. I'm a naval air crewman. I'm flying combat missions. I'm the first in three different Navy squadrons, I'm holding my own, but how in the world did I get here? But we are human and you trace it back to your childhood or there's something traumatic that happens that wasn't processed and we become that little girl or boy with that trauma and we grow to be adults with that unprocessed trauma. So for you, Kimberly, I would encourage you to continue to be the salt in their light, to share your truth, your testimonial. Many people don't realize that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It gets overshadowed by breast cancer awareness. And many people don't realize that there is a link between victims who experience domestic violence and breast cancer or cancer period because that trauma that worry that stress lowers your immune system and triggers that dormant cancer just lying there and will trigger it and set it off so again that bringing that awareness and starting with our young girls and boys so that's how i would encourage you also and um, join different like I live in Maryland, so there's Maryland Network Against Domestic Violence. Every state has a agency and you can become a member. You can also get brochures and pamphlets. So wherever you go, you can spread that awareness. So keep sharing your truth and being that salt and light. Thank you. Absolutely, hopefully I answered your question. Oh, you did, absolutely, absolutely, thank you. Fantastic, it's good to see you. Thank you. So I see some comments here. If anyone wants to come off mute and share your comment um, with Jennifer over the line, you're welcome to do so. Or if there's any other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or come off mute. Um, Jennifer, there are some great comments here for you. Awesome. Yeah, stress will generate many diseases. Absolutely, we have to be mindful. And that's why boundaries are so important with self and others. I just gave a boundary keynote to, um, I was a closing keynote speaker for another event um, on Friday. And it was about drawing the line, creating healthy boundaries for self-improving of self-care. So it, all these things are necessary. Self-awareness is key. 
and especially in this virtual time. Yes, Miss Erica. I had a question. Um, I love your presentation. Um, and uh, the question is, how do you, as a speaker, do you, you share, you have no problem with sharing your faith? How do you, how do you address those who may not believe uh, or have faith or, or believe in God or so forth? Great question, Miss Erica. I, um, when I'm hired, and it's by like a school or a military organization, I am very mindful of their rules and policies. However, there's always a way for me to input God. Like you will see, I never mentioned Jesus, never mentioned Jesus Christ or God, but I mentioned key words in scriptures like fearfully and wonderfully made, faith, um, you know, those type of phrases, those scriptures. So to me, I have to keep God first, but I will honor the client, but I'm going to put it in there in such a way that it still honors God. Yeah, so it's just those, those scriptures. Thank you. Because they'll think, oh, that's inspiring, fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, faith, everybody needs to have faith or believe in something. Thank you. Um, Padme, Padmini, sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's asking for an example of a boundary. Can you talk a little bit about boundaries? Give some examples. Absolutely. A boundary, if you think of a boundary like your house and it has a fence, there has to, in order for a person to come in, in, inside that fence area, they have to know you or have a purpose of being there. Then you got your front door. Not everybody can come through your front door. And then when you let them in your house, not everybody can come through your bedroom door. So there's relationships. So a boundary I would uh, encourage you is saying no when you truly mean no. Many times we'll say maybe, or will compromise. But no is a boundary setting word, or this is uncomfortable for me. I'm not okay with this. Okay, so it's your phrases. And you can say them respectfully. You can say them with confidence. And if there's a person who doesn't respect boundaries or that you need to be firm with, I would encourage you to plan ahead with setting that boundary with that individual. And many times we need to set boundaries within ourselves, as far as excuses, the fear of failing, the low self-esteem, codependency habits. We have to set boundaries with ourselves. Okay, Angela Price asked the question, when did the boldness kick in and how do you let it carry you now on your journey? Healing, 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 healing is so important. I had, to, when I got out of my abusive relationship, I first had to acknowledge what I was in. I truly believe that denial feeds dysfunction. Because when we deny what we've experienced and we suppress and we suppress and we suppress, lo and behold, it's going to come bubbling out like a volcano. And when we don't acknowledge, we are giving the enemy power over that to keep us, hey, you should feel shame, you should feel guilty. So I had to acknowledge. Then I had to restore my broken soul. And that meant giving myself affirmations in the morning, um, looking in the mirror before I got dressed. Jennifer, you are beautiful. Jennifer, you are worthy. Jennifer, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and that restored my broken soul because I was beaten down for so long. And then the last phase, I tell you no lie, the forgiveness, that was the hardest and it took a while. So I truly believe 
that a victim, they can be a survivor. And a survivor is just existing. I want people to thrive because from in a traumatic experience, like an abusive relationship, you can physically get out of the situation, but still be he uh, held bound mentally and emotionally. We got to release those shackles. So until I came to a point to where I for could forgive my ex-boyfriend, forgive myself, and even forgiving um, my family, my parents, because I'm like, why didn't you give me the tools I needed to navigate this world, this life? So that was my journey. And that I found purpose from the pain. And that's where my boldness came. Okay, yeah, thank you, Sylvia. That's right, this is a wonderful presentation. Um, so many of us have to realize that you cannot allow no one to undermine your greatness. We are all God's.